What's up everybody? This is Kristen Marie, Certified Sex Therapist, bringing you the next myth in our sex myth series. And this week, it is affection always leads to intercourse. To highlight the depth of this myth, uh, what we can really do is trade out the word intercourse for anything along the uh, giant spectrum of uh, intimacy promoting acts or sexual acts. Um, and so what it's basically breaking down to is if one partner feels an immense amount of guilt or that it's not their place to say that they would really only rather go to this certain point and that that sounds really great to them, um, but going all the way to X, Y, or Z, just they don't, for whatever reason, feel up to it or up for it, not really in the mood, um, which is 100% okay. Um, the problem comes in when they feel like they can't say no or they're really afraid of, that their partner's going to be upset in any way, and so they they do it anyway, and it really robs um, the situation of of all of the benefits of having an intimate experience with one's partner. So something I wanted to show to highlight what we're talking about here uh, is a little diagram that came that was uh, created by Neil Cannon, a certified sex therapist, and his colleague uh, Lisa Thomas in Denver, Colorado. Uh, they came up with what is called the wedding cake, happy healthy couples. Um, uh, the wedding cake of sexual fulfillment. And basically what it is, is a four-tiered wedding cake, um, which, which shows the proportion of, uh, of certain things in a relationship that can help contribute to uh, a thriving um, relationship, but including the sexual uh, components. And so the basic, the bottom part is um, what they call the connection piece, you know, uh, shared experiences, things that the couples like to do together, the day-to-day, um, why they chose each other, those types of things. Um, the, the second tier is um, affection, um, uh, non-demand, pleasuring and touch and all those things that would be um, put in a category that, that aren't maybe necessarily typically thought of as sexual. Um, and then the second tier would be foreplay. Um, and so anything between intercourse and um, it, it, having to do with the sexual realm and that, that spectrum is vast and large um, and so what each couple might consider as foreplay um, would be in that third tier and then all the way up to um, intercourse and so um, that is just something I wanted to highlight to show um, what like the happy healthy sexually fulfilled couples um, might have things in a similar um, proportion of that wedding cake diagram. So if you have watched a couple of my other videos, you have heard me talk about Barry and Emily McCarthy. They are the authors of Rekindling Desire, a fantastic resource for uh, long-term partners. Um, but Barry and Emily have coined what uh, you heard me mention just a minute ago, uh, non-demand touch or non-demand pleasuring, which is a vital piece um, of a thriving sex life. So we want to talk for just a second about the guidelines that they offer uh, for non-demand touch or non-demand pleasuring. Okay, it starts with the belief that touching in and of itself is valued, that touching occurs both inside and outside of the bedroom, and that not all touching must result in intercourse. So I see that's kind of what I was saying before. The second guideline they offer is that both partners, both higher drive and lower drive partners, value affectionate, sensual, playful, erotic, and intercourse experiences, that the vast spectrum is valued between both partners. It's not all or nothing. The third piece is that both partners value initiating touch and intercourse, so both feel free to say no or no thank you and suggest an alternative way to connect and share pleasure. This can really challenge that uh, guilt or uh, fear of making one's partner feel rejected or anything like that, but also protect one's autonomy within the sexual realm so that more often than not they are fully showing up to the sexual experience. It makes it uh, much more likely that they will learn to enjoy um, and see this as a thriving part of their life instead of something that just creates a lot of guilt or shame or pressure. So that's a very important piece is to make it part of your uh, relationship to make a suggestion of an alternative way to share pleasure together. Something else to think of is um, the ladies over at A Woman's Touch at www.sexualityresources.com have identified healthy sexuality as the following five things. Uh, it's consensual, pleasurable, 
engaged in with um, awareness, uh, connecting, and fun. Um, so really quick, I just want to go through those five things, give a couple uh, things to think about, and I'm sure you will see these show up in a future myth. Okay, uh, consensual, without coercion, and without strings attached. So the whole using sex as a weapon thing that we still hear about here and, um, now and then. Pleasurable, yes, and how everyone experiences pleasure is very different. And so this is not as simple as just saying pleasurable and one might assume. That might be very different for how for each partner and that is part of the journey of discovering that with, with whoever you are with. Um, and the third is engaged in with awareness. Um, this one is kind of tough for a lot of people, in my practice anyway, um, is learning how to be aware um, of their own sexual experience. Um, turning on those um, pieces of their life can be a little conflicting at times. Um, and so engaging in with awareness is huge. It's the ability each person uh, has to be fully present. Um, if you find yourself checking out during sex, it just gives kind of an indication of direction you can go um, to getting this uh, to a place where one doesn't feel like they're checking out. Uh, the fourth piece is connecting. Uh, sex can help you feel closer to your partner and to yourself um, and provides a different way for people to communicate. So it's not always verbal. Some people really do communicate uh, their love and their feelings through uh, sexuality. And then the fifth one is fun. Uh, sex is playful, intense, silly. Um, it can be very much so full of laughter um, and can be a part of one's life that is taken out of the checkbox um, domain and into uh, being playful and tapping into that side of yourself that, that a lot of times is just uh, squandered in adulthood. So I hope some of this information has helped challenge the myth that any sort of touch or pleasure has to lead all the way to a certain destination point. So one final piece to this uh, is driven home by one of uh, another great quote by the amazing Esther Perel. She says, our partner's sexuality does not belong to us. It isn't just for and about us, and we should not assume that it rightfully falls within our jurisdiction. So if you are listening to this and your partner um, you feel that maybe your partner might be one of those that has a difficult time um, advocating for their needs within the sexual realm and might be acting out of a place of duty in order to um, take care of your needs um, versus uh, bringing their whole self into the sexual encounter. Um, m maybe this might be a good quote to remind that um, if we feel like we are owed or it is um, all about us, um, that it can be extremely problematic and can make the partner feel either coerced or that um, it is just too difficult for them to uh, voice their needs and maybe starting with this topic might be a way of getting the ball rolling to a different dialogue, a more uh, healthy dialogue about sexuality within your relationship. So take a look at your relationship, take a look at your patterns and how you might be showing up to this part of your relationship and see if there is anything you can do to improve your part, um, making it easier for your partner to vocalize their desires, their needs, their wants. And again, if there is, is one partner who is feeling like they would rather only go to a certain point in the spectrum of sexuality uh, experiences, uh, confirm that that is okay. That needs to be something that is part of the, the relationship and bring in the new pattern of offering uh, an alternative way of connecting and of sharing pleasure together. So my hope is that by challenging some of these sexuality myths, that we are looking at a much healthier community here in the near future. All right, rock on.